is party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Brather Show. We're in the Mothership, which is Studio 22, Blaze TV. I hope that you uh, will go and subscribe at blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad and save on an annual subscription. And uh, the puppet master, Mark, the perfectionist, is at the helm driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. Start the clock, Mark. I won't know where we're at. Kick that thing off. There you go. And then, of course, uh, Super Chris Cruz and Let's Love Brandon at the helm. Uh, sitting in the hot seat today, Representative State, Representative Brian Slayton, District 2, Texas. Yeah. How are you, buddy? Doing great. World's going to hell. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So we done? We yeah. done here? <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much sums it up. You know, let's just give it up at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I always uh, I not only consider you my friend, but I appreciate what you do for the state of Texas. And you're one of those guys that doesn't mind pissing people off. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, so you you don't stir the pot needlessly. You you stir it effectively, and um, you you do a good job with that. And uh, this pot needs stirring. You know, we 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 love the status quo when the status ain't nothing to quo about, as I like to say. <laughs> and we got some problems here in Texas. We talked about on last night's show. You and I were just talking about it as well. That um, these um, these drag shows for children are getting out of hand. More and more businesses popping up. I just heard that there's a church in Katy, Texas. Pastors hosting a drag show September 25th, I think it is, 5 p.m. So we're going to organize. We're organizing pretty heavily to get people there to protest that. And uh, I'd love to see that thing just not even happen. Uh, you've got some things that you're doing in regards to that particular event. Mm -hmm. You going on? What you said you going on the, uh, some of the shows? Talk yeah, about it. Uh, Fox and Friends first. Yeah, they're having me on to talk about the drag queens, and then there's a radio station in Houston because I believe that one's because of the this church that's popping up yeah. yeah yeah it's it's they're getting very blatant with it mm -hmm. um oh, yeah. and we're not showing up effectively to yeah. to fight this kind of well, stuff i think i've mentioned to you before i don't know but i remember you know as the 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 homosexual movement has developed over you know 20 30 years yeah. and some of that was while i was in the ministry you know they would always say well this is just what happens between two people behind closed doors in their bedroom leave right. them alone and and i i had friends you know in in that lifestyle and I, I knew it was more than that and here we are and and they the last thing they care about is what's happening behind closed doors with two people you have to accept it all or there's threats of violence yeah i mean you see antifa showing up fully armed there, there's no agree to disagree with them yeah and 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 i find it odd that um you know They'll, they'll say love is love, but they don't display that towards you and me that just wants them to leave children alone. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And, and, and once you get to a certain, once you pass a certain threshold, that's not enough. You got to go further. And what I've said about this the whole time, I don't care if it's feminist. I don't care if it's sexual lifestyle movement. I don't care. It's not about equality. It's not about inclusivity. They could say that all they want. It's about control. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they mm -hmm. want control. You're seeing that firsthand. You are introduced. You've introduced a statement uh, to the state of Texas in regards to uh, the transgenderism, but specifically the modification of bodies and sex changes, for lack of better terms. Uh, it's being taught in public medical schools mm -hmm. in the state of Texas. What's the story on that? Yeah. So uh, we did a series of information requests. Um, trying to see if this was something being taught to young medical professionals at our institutions that you're, you're my tax dollars pay for. Yeah. And uh, basically what we found is, yes, they are, um, they are teaching the counseling, teaching kids th that, uh, you know, you need to be a different gender. Then we have them uh, learning about prescription medication, what to give children to chemically castrate them that cannot be reversed. And then also observing the medical procedures. There is one particular um, uh, course. And like I say, I have no way to back up what they're telling me right. uh, that it will I believe what they're telling me, but I have no way to know if there's more to it. They they specifically told me that the students were not observing modifications to children. But how do we know that? Because I've had people tell me someone went through UT Southwest and did observe that and had a problem with the, you know, it, it was a, a double mastectomy mm -hmm. of a girl. And they had a big problem with that, but they had to stay in there in the school but yeah our taxpayer dollars are funding this everything the counseling prescription the procedures 
and um um you know it, it's happening because that was when i first learned about this and, and would talk to people one of the first answers they'd always give is is this really happening brian come on that yeah, sounds really that weird time. that yeah. they would do this and then that they'd do it to children. And and they're like, oh, how do you know if it's happening? Yes, there are, the, the proper word is syllabi. There are syllabi uh, <laughs> from multiple campuses, campi, yeah. uh, telling people, t- <laughs> teaching this. And so all of our, our young professionals are going out in the medical field and they're ready to implement yeah. all this that you and I, believe is child abuse yeah. and it's removing healthy body parts right Mo- modern medicine is teaching to remove healthy body parts right and, and what what i would love to tell people to go read the uh the memo that you put out press release yeah. the press release but they won't allow, allow it on the state's well, website yeah so i put out a press release talking about what i had learned stating the facts that you know state institution that we help fund and set the budget for yeah. that they're teaching this they gave us their syllabi and then uh how texas house leadership uh, will not allow that press release to go on my state page they said it was inflammatory but if you go to the state yeah if you go to the state website you can watch video you can read in the journal where democrats called us racist for months you can mm-hmm. find all kinds of stuff and um yeah, they won't allow me to post that. And they still haven't told you what is supposedly inflammatory. Now, I'm going to read the statement that we think it is. We think it is. We think Verbally, it is. Verbally, they, they mentioned this one. They said there was more, but yeah, um, nothing in writing. You stated, you said, Brian Slayton, District 2, State of Texas, you said the revelation that some of these practices are being taught in public medical schools is abhorrent. Now, when I read it, I thought maybe that's it. You're calling it abhorrent. No. Additional investigation of these medical schools should be done. So the people of Texas can have an even clearer idea of what their tax dollars are supporting. No one, here it is, no one in their right mind uh-oh, believes that surgically removing healthy body parts and ingesting an unnatural amount of hormones and drugs is the right answer to a mental condition. Right. I'm calling for a swift end to these bogus and harmful medical practices and look forward to my colleagues joining me in this common sense fight. Mm-hmm makes sense to me yes i mean if i if i just took a hatchet and walked off my hand i mm-hmm. think they would probably put me in a in a under mental sure. evaluation oh absolutely i i mean using medical science right what what is it it's reproducible uh experiments right i mm-hmm. mean you want to test someone's blood you want to uh, uh check them for cancer you know anything you do mris uh, blood tests whatever it's it's scientific you have a baseline you can test it you know what's right or wrong you know what's normal but with this it's it's all psychology there is no objective right. truth to psychology you can't reproduce it but they're they're using medical using medicine to say yeah we're going to remove change these kids for life chemically yeah. castrate them actually do procedures and and they think that's in in the name of good medicine it is barbaric yeah i mean absolutely barbaric and you know other civilizations will look back at what we're doing and say what in the world was wrong with texas yeah. and i think they'll if they're if they're smart and they look back they're going to say what's wrong with texas republicans yeah that's because true. we're not doing anything to stop it that's true um are you getting any support behind you well, the public, yes. The public, yeah. Yeah. And, but um, I mean in terms of elected officials. Well, I know. I knew you yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. Not really. I mean, I mean, there's That's members. That's amazing to me. Yeah, there, there's members that will occasionally send me some messages and like, hey, you know, good job. This is crazy. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, we'll know we're, we're, you know, real close to November. We got our, at the end of September, we have a Republican caucus meeting. Um, some call it a caucus meeting. I call it the meeting where everyone gets to yell at Brian. <laughs> um and uh so and, uh, and, you know, i laugh because i know you're right i well, know it's you true know, and, and you mentioned stirring things up i'm honestly not trying to stir things none up of it's are, just none standing of are up wanting... for the right thing like leave kids alone yeah leave their I mean, private parts I mean, alone why are you guys creating this fight we won't stir it up stop creating the fight that's right i had dinner with somebody the other day and they said man your life is stressful all you do is confront people and i'm like you know yeah somebody's got to do it yeah I mean, I don't think right. it's stressful. I think it's my responsibility. That's right. These are kids. That's right. I mean, and, and you and I, as men, we have to sleep with ourselves at night. Yeah. And we don't want to go to bed going, man, I, you know, I'm, 
I'm weak. I'm I'm <laughs> pathetic. You yeah. know, like I had a chance to do something and I tried. Yeah. Don't we can't control the outcomes. But yeah, we're gonna have that caucus meeting. I'm sure I'm gonna get yelled at some there. Um, and then uh, the election, and then you know. So basically, what you're gonna see for the next two months is don't vote for Democrats. Don't vote for Democrats. Right. And then after November, you're gonna see a shift, and they're gonna say make Democrats chairman. And that's what we're. That's exactly what. <laughs> that's what happen. we're gonna see is yeah. And so I'm of course filing the amendment to stop that. So that's gonna be pretty contentious. But uh, I hope we're there. Um, I just don't know. Honestly, don't know if. Uh, our leadership has the stomach to do it. I, I think what they may try to do is just stop insurance from paying it, but that's not going to stop people from doing it. That's not going to stop the counseling. That's not going to stop the prescription medication or the procedures. It's just not. People will fund it. People yeah. will pay for it. And and if you believe it's child abuse, we shouldn't teach child abuse, prescribe child abuse, or let medical procedures outside of insurance yeah. occur. But I, I'm some things I've heard, I'm afraid they're going to go that route, and they're going to be able to advertise that, you know, gender modification of children is now outlawed in Texas, but in reality, you just can't use insurance to pay for it. But your tax go- dollars can teach medical professionals how to, to do, do it. it yeah how, how to yeah. do those uh repetitive experiments mm-hmm. on your kid yeah. uh and this isn't a, a a breast reduction that might have a medical cause and necessary you know this is this is talking about changing someone's gender before as you said puberty sometimes. pumping them full of drugs before puberty yeah. so that they never have a chance to even hit puberty yeah. in regards to what they were biologically born with and this is Texas. I remind everybody, this is Texas we're talking about. This is not New York, Illinois, California. This is yeah. Texas. This is not Oregon. This is not Washington. This is Texas. Oh, well, Chad, think about this. You were in the ministry. I was in the ministry. How many seminaries are within 300 miles of Dallas, Texas? Yes. Yeah. Right? Right. People call this the Bible Belt. Right. And then we got churches that really aren't doing anything to stop it. In fact, that one in Houston is going to help host a drag they're going to foster it yeah which promote it which is all in that same nerve um we we, uh you know we're we're in a bad way we don't have leadership um doesn't matter if you're talking church or republican party we don't have it Uh, we got some good people here and there you know but as far as republicans trying to do the right thing on this that they all campaign on right they all campaign on faith and family they're gonna they're worried about the the left they're worried about the attacks they're worried about the death threats yeah and um i mean and, the, and that does exist sure. when as you said when you have fully armed antifa members that are guarding the door and escorting people in and out of a drag show that is designed to be quote family friendly which specifically mm-hmm. is identifying and targeting children yep. in these things um i don't know at what point in time people don't wake up and say you know we're really at war uh, this is not just a this is not just a um i mean it's been a spiritual war from the beginning Mm -hmm. we understand that we know that what we're fighting is is principalities and powers i mean this is not a this this is not a flesh and blood war this is but even if you don't believe that it's still an ideological war it is a it is a philosophical war it's a war of agendas and narratives but it's about to get physical in some things Mm -hmm. um and i don't want that no one wants that but man at some point in time we got to realize these people don't they don't just want to beat us they want us gone Mm -hmm. They want us annihilated. That's right. I get the death right. threats. I know you get it. I've mm-hmm. heard your voicemails. Mm-hmm. I've heard the stuff that gets sent to you. Yeah. Um, you know, I get threats every single day. Yeah. Over this stuff, and you know, I know you. You travel armed. I travel armed. I've, I've, I've seen, I've seen your office in Austin. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, know, I know how you guys are. Yeah. So, I mean, before Texas I was in, to the core. Before I was in politics, I always had at least one gun with me everywhere I went. Because yeah. as my granddad said, you never know. But now that I'm in politics, yeah, you better believe. Yeah. And, and uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't worry. Uh, you can't worry about the death threats because they're just trying to control you. That's sure. just what bullies do. Yeah. And so my thing is, is, is just, uh, you know, do the right thing and uh that's why it's fun living life as a christian yeah you uh do the right thing be bold yeah uh we we are to be bold as christians and if somebody wants to hurt me i can't control that but you know i can always shoot back well <laughs> i i preach you can that's right and uh i listen and and on top of that i'm praying for you i do yeah. every day I, I appreciate you brian i um i'm thankful for your stance 
I'm thankful for your friendship, and uh, I'm here to support you in any way that I possibly can. And I want to go a minute longer in this segment and just say, make sure in November, go vote. Go vote. Make sure that guys like Brian Slayton are reelected and, and they're, they continue to go to Austin. Keep sending them because there's not a lot of them down there that are standing up for what's right and what's true. There's not. Mm-hmm. I wish I could say there were, but I can, I can count on one hand the guys down there I trust, and I don't even need the whole hand. Mm-mm. I don't. <laughs> and so – uh, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that either. So um, thank you, yep. Brian, for thank coming Thank you, on. Chad. Appreciate uh, what's it. Your, what's your website again? You can go to brianslayton.com, B-R-Y-A-N, yes, and Y-A-N. then Slayton with no Y, yeah. S-L-A-T-O-N. All right. Well, we're going to go to a break. Thank you, Brian. Uh, you. Birch Gold, I love these guys. Uh, you know that the inflation deal is is real. Um, this stuff is ridiculous. The CPI is at another 40-year high. The recession is real, even though they want to redefine it and tell you that it's something else. Listen, I, I love gold. I love gold. I love silver. I love making sure that my money is actually backed by something. That's why I choose Birch Gold. And if you got all your money in the market or it's tied to the U.S. dollar, well, you really are playing with fire. So it's critical for you to take a good, hard look at diversifying your savings into gold and silver. So I want you to text CHAD, I spell it CHAD, to 989898. Get a free information kit on how to diversify and protect your savings with precious metals. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands of satisfied customers. Gold is the right investment to make, folks. Text CHAD to 989898. Get real help from Birch Gold today. Again, that's CHAD. Text it to 989898. They'll send you a free, no-obligation information kit on how to protect your hard-earned savings with gold. We'll be right back. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez. Well, you really cut that close. Um, yeah. Everything is wearing me out right now. All right. I talked to Brian Slayton, who is, by the way, folks, he is one of the good guys. He's one of the good guys in Austin. Uh, make sure he gets reelected. Um, he's one of those who's going to stand up. And I tell you, they, they even the Republicans, they don't like him down there. He catches hell from them. I mean, he catches a hell. There, you would think in Texas we wouldn't have that many rhinos. You would be dead wrong. You would be dead wrong. We have uh, way this too is, many. I mean, Texas is the epitome of establishment Republicans. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big government. I, that, that, the whole thing, and people didn't hear me, the whole thing that I ran on when I was running for governor was big government is the enemy of the people. And this government here in Texas is big. It is big, big, big. Yeah. Um, it, it mirrors Washington, D.C. I mean, people talk about Florida and Ron DeSantis doing all these things. Florida's government, it, it ain't like Texas. Mm-hmm. Texas is a lot bigger than Florida. And there's a lot more going on here in terms of, like, that's not to discredit Ron DeSantis and what I believe he's doing in Florida, but man, there's there's some big establishment here in Texas. When you have Texas, big, big. Texas Republicans not willing to stand up and just say, you know what, yeah. we're banning genital mutilation of children, uh, you kind of got a problem. Listen, there's guys I know personally in Austin, and I've talked to them about this. I'm like, guys, what's the deal? And they push back on it. They do. They push back. Um, Wisconsin. The whole world's turned into a shithole, honestly. <laughs> Uh, Wisconsin did a kid-friendly festival, pride festival, and uh, handed out free medical referral letters for gender-affirming drugs Excuse and surgeries. Me? You heard me right. They handed no. out free medical referral letters for gender-affirming drugs. So, I mean, that's Wisconsin. They're not doing that here in Texas that we know of, but it's coming. <sighs> Yeah, but, it's but, coming. But, but but what would stop them? What, what exactly now. would stop them? And I know you're fired up because, because people aren't showing up, and I'm telling you, uh, the perfect example is the September 25th deal. I've put my name on the line. I said, put my face on the flyer. Let's go. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, I said, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. TPUSA is lining up against it. I mean, oh, they're, we're getting a bunch of stuff out there. So um, September 25th in Katy, Texas, we're organizing. I mean, we've got to, we, this has got to be a deal where we just show up in force and be like, no, this ain't happening. Yes. This ain't happening. Yes. You need people on the outside. You also need people on the inside. Again, g- disrupting the event every 10 minutes and you make it such an unenjoyable experience for these people that they never do it again. I mean, you know, you go to jail. You, you, I'm, I, would, I would be willing to. I'm not to. saying violence. I'm just saying you, you want to disrupt something. Oh, it's private property. It's a private business. It's a church, whatever. I can disrupt it. 
But what are you going to do, put me in handcuffs? Well, that's what I'm, I can fake it like AOC. But well, that's what I'm saying is that you're not going to get a like once they tell you to leave, you leave. Yeah. Right. But but then you've got another one coming in ten minutes later that's going to do the same damn thing. Right. So that this there's no reason you're not committing a crime. They just remove you from the premises and you will not be allowed to go back. But that doesn't mean that there's fifty other people. There's not fifty other people waiting to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Yeah. This story about the, uh, them, I'll let you guys go read it, is at post, thepostmillennial.com. Letters of readiness for surgery were available for free at Madison, Wisconsin Pride Festival this weekend for those identifying as trans or non-binary. Integrated Counseling, LLC, was founded by Elena Meyer, a licensed professional counselor Counseling. for trans and gender expansive folks. That's with an X. I use informed consent and self determination models uh said that in her psychology today profile um according to their defunct now defunct website they have locations in madison milwaukee um they aim to provide a space for lgbtq plus community throughout wisconsin to find room for uh to pause to be to heal Uh, anyway it's the same old jargon it sounds sounds wonderful it sounds like something you really ought to do right sounds Um, like uh Maybe the counselor's not counseling in the way that uh, she should be, perhaps. No. But, you know, um, uh, Houston School District issues training on keeping trans identity secret from parents. Oh, good. Well, here's the thing. Play that, uh, play that clip, Mark. In January of uh, 2022, I went to uh, my daughter's elementary school to deal with a very sensitive incident. My daughter attempted suicide by hanging in one of the school bathrooms. My wife and I were told that, uh, by the school counselor that it happened because of an ongoing issue with her gender identity. We were in shock because our daughter never showed any signs of questioning her biological sex. Um, we were told that they knew about the gender issue due to meetings they were having with our daughter behind our backs. We learned that during these meetings, our, daughter, uh, our daughter's confusion was affirmed and validated through the use of fictitious male names and male pronouns. Our daughter uh, was living a double life without our consent or knowledge. She was affirmed and socially transitioned in school. Due to the nature of the incident, uh, our daughter was corrected and taken away from us um, with minimal contact for over a week until she was released uh, under our care. As a family, we had to pick up the pieces, uh, clean up the mess, and start a period of painful healing. However, we decided as parents from the beginning that we were not going to affirm the the dysphoria. Uh, We were not uh, going to validate a delusion contrary to uh, the recommendation from some professionals in the field. We provided, um, actually we did provide uh, unconditional support uh, with proper mental health care and non-affirming therapy to our daughter. Underlying disorders like depression and anxiety were properly treated we remove her from the school environment and place her in homebound. We broke her back from her confusion. She is steadfast and sure of her gender and the suicidal ideation is gone. Good. Sad, bad, but good. At least these parents found out and got involved. I mean, what if she'd have hung herself? What if she'd have been successful in her suicide attempt? You know, at what point in time are at what time at what point in time are folks gonna say, stop saying, Oh, y'all are just full of hate, y'all are a bunch of bigots, y'all are transphobes, da, 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 da. and say, No, we actually love these people. We care about these people. We're fighting for these people. At what point in time are you going to realize that gender dysphoria is a mental illness that is something that you are supposed to treat, not compliment, not help, not aid in making it even worse? I mean, when you have, you know, 50 percent, almost 50 percent of people with this mental illness commit suicide. And then you got, again, this the teacher, the school was helping transition this child who showed no signs of this at home. 
And now you got Houston is going to train to their administrators and their teachers to keep trans identity secrets from parents. What the absolute hell is going on here? You know, the training says a student's gender transition should be considered confidential. It is highly detrimental to out a student to another school staff, peers, or student's family. All communication should be in collaboration with the student. And that's not love. I mean, that you want to talk about, and I know, let me just be as fair as I can possibly be. A lot of these folks out here who are, who are believing in this and pushing this and saying that this is a healthy thing, you think you're helping. You think you're helping people. You're not. You are adding to the problem exponentially. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you something. What, let, let's say, I'm going to use a, just an analogy off the top of my head. Let's say, you know, I, I, I run past a barbed wire fence and I get cut and it just opens me up right big nasty gash right here and uh i don't clean it i don't put any you know any antibiotic on it i don't put any antibacterial on it i just i just take it and i just wrap it up just wrap it up and it's like i've got the i've got this thing here but you can't see it because we're just gonna put a, a bandage on it and i just let it go like that and i let it go for like three weeks well then what have i got i got tetanus i got gangrene I got all this kind of stuff. I haven't exposed the injury. I haven't properly treated it, and it's gotten exponentially worse. Now, now I'm, now a cut is could kill me. This is what's going on with this, but it's psychologically and emotionally and spiritually. And then it then there, there's physical transition. And what have you got? I mean, you you have gangrene of the soul, right? This is it, and you're just rotting away, and you call that love by concealing it. Oh, we're just going to conceal it. We're not going to let anybody know. We're going to keep this wound a secret. That's damaging to the person. So don't tell me about hate. You don't tell me how much you love this quote-unquote community. You don't. You're killing these people. You are killing these people. Which is why I am a very strong advocate for uh, the death penalty for all of those involved in this. There you go. That's I just have no tolerance for it anymore. I really don't. Well, I think you know, it the thing be, about the thing about, you know, dead pedophiles is they don't reoffend. They sure don't. So, you know, this this kind of stuff, this this needs to be. This is why this is why uh, radical Muslims in other countries want to kill us. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This these are the things they point to and say, "See, they're the great Satan." Yeah, they say western civilization, look how horrible they are. Yeah. And you know what? In this case, I agree with them. Yeah. I mean, this is horrible. This is terrible. You are, and, and people are in there. I mean, I see that footage of what you guys collected from Sunday, and I'm just appalled by it. I mean, I just literally, I mean, yes, last night's episode, even right now, I just have to be like, because I, because I want to say some things, man, and I do. Anyway, all right, we're going to take a break. We're going to breathe. We'll see what somebody sends me during this break that I can get pissed off. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, if you're a homeowner. You might already be a victim of home title theft and don't even know it. Uh, you got cyber thieves out there that are forging their names onto the title of your home. But I'll help you find out. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. They got a special offer that's free for you. Uh, go to their website. Simply enter your address for your free no-obligation home title scan. And you'll discover if a cyber thief is tampering with your home's title. Uh, the title to your home, that's the only document that proves you actually own it. They can forge uh, their name on the title. They take out loans against your home or even say you sold it to them. First things first, make sure your home's title is secure. Do that at HomeTitleLock.com. And then sign up with them. Use promo code radio at HomeTitleLock.com. Enter your address. Find out if there's a, yeah, that's a $100 value right there. So you're already winning in that. But then they're going to put a virtual barrier around your home's title and make sure nobody tampers with it. It's code radio for savings. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. We'll be right back. All right, folks, uh, give me a minute to talk to you. Um, you know, once upon a time in uh, our great nation, at least historically great, there were people who just dared to throw all of their worldly possessions into the uh, back of a Conestoga wagon and just head west and settle in parts of the country that would one day become states like Texas. Uh, when they got here and began setting up homesteads, not a single one of them unpacked an air conditioner. <laughs> Yet, inexplicably, they still stayed. It's 107 degrees outside. 
Uh, despite the fact that living in Texas is essentially like living inside of an oven set on broil for about nine months of the year, uh, it is hot, folks. They chose to stay. Now, I don't know if I could do that. I, I don't know if you could do that. These were tough people. These, these were either hardier, stronger people than the limp-wristed weaklings we've become today, or else they were people suffering who just didn't know any better. Now, at any rate, the thing I want to ask you today is, are you ready to go back to that? Because as of right now, about one in six American households cannot keep up with their energy bills. And in case your math is as bad as mine, that's about 20 million Americans. Um, appreciate you, Brandon. Really appreciate you. Uh, since 2019, the average amount a household owes on their overdue utility bills is, um, you ready for this number? $792. That's about $16 billion nationwide. And isn't it interesting that the federal government is about to sink half a trillion dollars into forgiving student loan debt? Sorry, I meant to say redistributing half a billion dollars in student loan debt, but we're, we're letting a you know, sixth of the American populace fall through the cracks on energy bills during one of the hottest summers we've seen in a long time. Oh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, wherefore art thy priorities, you aged fool, you drooling down, just sundowners fool. I mean, I can't believe that we're even saying these things. And it's not that the government should be forgiving energy debts either. Rather, they shouldn't be doing the things that make the energy bills so effing high in the first place. Never has a problem so severe been so easy to solve, and never has such a simple solution been so trampled upon by the more poorly run administration. Why? Well, it's almost as if it's on purpose. <laughs> you know, this isn't even like the grocery situation, which is bad enough. Americans have been having to make some tough decisions at the supermarket this past couple of years. Do I buy the name brand? Do I save money by getting the off brand? There at least you have two bad choices and can pick the lesser of two evils. And by the way, do not do that on Oreos. Spend the extra money, please. I'm telling you, you regret it if you don't. But when it comes to the power of this energy situation, most people don't even have that choice. About the best they can do is dig a pit in their front yard and wait for one of those solar panel salesmen to walk by and fall in it and then sign up for that. And that might help, but it's not going to fix the problem. Even if you're as left on energy as you can possibly get, at some point, you're going to have to face the fact that we cannot be energy dependent on other countries right now, especially when we could be drilling right here in America. I mean, we could do it right now. We could do it tomorrow. We could do it next week, but we could do it. Tell you what, Joe Biden, how about you make a little visit down to Texas and step outside your limo for five minutes? Uh, and if you thought falling off your bike took the wind out of you, try breathing in the fire and brimstone scented air that we've got to offer here every day. That's right. Joe Biden. Uh, you sniff a girl's hair around these parts, you're going to get a snoot full of burnt shampoo. That's for sure, because people are frying. Uh, I don't know why everybody's a damned idiot but me, but they are. Sarah? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Everyone? Everyone. Oh, bummer. Present company excluded. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm miffed about this student loan thing. I, I don't want to get into that because I'm, I'm just railing on Twitter yeah. on this whole thing. And everybody's a damn expert out there on this thing. That's another thing. School prices. You want to go to school? Listen, I'm all for higher education. But one, it's not education anymore. It's ideology mm -hmm. presentation and uh, narrative pushing. And yeah, I mean, University of Texas in Austin has now got a class on Taylor Swift songwriting. And you wonder why you can't pay your right. student loans? Right, right. Taylor Swift songwriting, that's a class. But imagine all the things Damn. you could do with that degree. <laughs> oh. I, I'm just saying, right. look, my kids went to school. My, my, my oldest daughter, I, I, all of my kids are in college now, including my 15-year-old. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all, and you know what they're doing? Paying for it. Right. Paying for it. It should, I mean, there's ways to do this. Yeah. You know, one of my daughters right now is at a community college. She, she's not off at some deal, you know? And uh, she, because she's, that's what she can pay for. Right. I didn't, I didn't graduate with student debt. I mean, or. And I got a lot of education. And well, and let's say someone wants to go beyond community college, you can do that. You may have to work a semester or two to save up money so that you can afford the tuition or yeah. you may have to apply for scholarships or you may have to work while you're in the middle of going to school. These are all things that are personal decisions, you know, to make I've, sure that you can take <coughs> care of, you know, paying your own way. When I have people who ask me, they were like, how did you how did you get all that stuff done? Like when you were in college, because I was working on multiple things and I was like. Well, I, uh, I was very deliberate with it. Um, I worked while I was doing it. Um, I, worked, I found scholarships. I, and I, people have heard this story. 
I overlapped some things to get them, you know, it was, it was hectic. It was a pain in the ass to think about going to class right now. gives me the hives. Right. It does. Cause I, it was a tough, tenuous deal for me. Um, and I told somebody the other day, this, this lawyer in Fort Worth, I just love owning people on Twitter who just came at me and said, well, maybe, maybe, you know, if you'd have gone to college, you would understand that this, cause they, they, I, they, they want to do this whole PPP uh-huh. re- related thing about how, Listen, if, you're, if your business was shut down or you couldn't pay employees or whatever and the government sent you, a, you know, first of all, you know, you got to go fill out this mountain of paperwork. You don't even know what you're filling out. And, and you get to get to this point where they send you the money to help keep your business afloat and stuff like that. And you and you signed up for it knowing that it was going to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. You knew it was going to be forgiven because right. they tell you right up right. front, we're going to give you this to float you through. That is very different from from taking out these astronomical loans to go get a college education, which, by the way, you're not employing anybody when you're getting your college right. education. Right. There's nobody right. relying on you to feed their families while you're getting your college education. Right. So you comparing these things in is apples and oranges in so many ways. Mm-hmm. And somebody, this guy said, well, you should have prepared. These people should have prepared for all contingencies. And I was like, oh, so a global pandemic that we, we've never seen before in terms of government interference and right. shutdowns. Right. We were supposed to prepare for that contingency. He goes, well, I did. I, I was prepared for 12 months of shutdowns. Well, first of all, <laughs> you're a single lawyer office in Fort Worth. You don't even have. And it says on his Twitter bio, uh, uh, proud lefty. I was like, you don't employ anybody. No. And then he says, oh, and he he says later on he said uh my wife's a nurse thank you for paying for her education i said so which is it did you prepare for the contingencies right. you can't pay off your wife's student loans right i mean which, what, what's the deal here you know i'm like you, you let me guess did he get awfully quiet after and, that uh, it, no no he doubled down he said oh you almost caught me he almost got me there because i said i said you know i'm not going to take business advice from a lawyer first of all <laughs> not you not the likes of you i said you actually make a living off of people not planning for contingencies. <laughs> like you're a divorce lawyer, you're yeah. a bankruptcy lawyer, you do all these different things. I said, you, you're actually planning, you build, you make money off of people who are going through a hard time. Mm-hmm. Not very left of you, not very socialist of you, not very progressive of you, but it is very re-re for you to keep coming back <laughs> at me. And I said, and I'm like, and you obviously, you need the government to pay off your wife's loans. I mean, it was just, it went on and on and on. These guys are so hypocritical. I said, but you know, trying to make contradictions work in your mind is exactly what I would expect from you as a, as a crooked attorney. Mm-hmm. That's what I would expect mm-hmm. from you. And you, you've gotten so used to doing it, you don't even hear the bullshit you're, you're shoveling. But no, this, this whole thing, these people trying to justify this PPP thing and saying, well, all these Republicans who got, like, that is apples and oranges. Now, look, I wasn't for the PPP. And that's, I think, the uh, the larger point, too, is yeah. like, uh, who says we agreed with PPP we in the first we place? We didn't want that to ever have to happen. Right. You know? People, but the government people, had to do something people, when it overstepped its bounds and people made got people shut, shut down. down. People got shut down. I wasn't, I mean, how many times did I make fun of and ridicule and push back against um, the freaking um, stimulus checks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was with Donald Trump, too. Yep. I was opposed. Yep. No, just let people go to work. Right. And then you're going to say, oh, you're okay with you. No, no, I was never for any of that. And by the way, as a business owner, I did not accept any PPP loans. I did not. I didn't. Didn't even inquire about it because I didn't believe in it. Yeah. My business, fortunately, was set up with contingencies. And I was able to pay people. And I didn't have to, you know, we didn't have to shut down. Well, I mean, I will say, I think we didn't shut down, but... That says a lot about you specifically because you do also work in an industry that was largely affected by the pandemic. I mean, we didn't shut down here. You didn't shut down your business, but a lot of venues shut down and you couldn't go play. Couldn't go. You know what? Still can't because these freaking venues out here, you know, and they don't like me. A lot of these venue, these performing arts centers and theaters around the country, they don't like me. Why? Because I take a stand for something. So, I mean, in essence, I've been canceled in that regard. And everybody's like, oh, well, you just go, you're just a grifter. You're trying to get money wherever you can. No, no, actually, I've, I've sacrificed a hell of a lot because of what I believe. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to kiss my ass. How about that? How about that? I'm going to take a break. Let Sarah kiss it the whole time. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, during the break, Chris texted us. Um, um, 
Today, the Prime Minister and Minister, whatever that name is, launched Canada's first ever 2SLGBTQI+. Plus. Wait, what the? what's the what's the two? It's two-spirit. The, le- the number two. Oh my God. Their action plan, a whole of government approach that will help us build a Canada where everyone is free and welcome uh. to be their true, authentic selves. Um, wow. <laughs> but did you see did you see that lingo now? It's no longer LGBT. Oh no, they've been it's they've been they've been, they've been buried. S, the L's, the G's, and the B's have been oh, buried. It's two S for two spirit. Two yes. spirit. Yeah. Okay. So like the LGB, the LGB is dead. To coming that. soon. They don't care about LGBT. Two S L G B T Q I A P plus. P. That's right. Or M M-A- for maps. M A P. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll be there. Um, don't, because look. They're just minor attracted people. They can't help it. Have they some, can't help Have themselves. some empathy for them. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the logic, right? I mean, that's, yes. that's the whole deal. That's what they keep saying. That's why, that's why they're pushing it as, as maps. So I'm scanning this thing, scanning this thing. And um, I, I mean, basically, this is a, they're going to spend $100 million over the next five years to make sure that the uh, acronyms are, are correct. <laughs> I mean, that's what they're doing. I mean, that's so everybody so, can feel like them true, their true selves. That's what I was going to say. So, so you can't feel free and welcome in a society unless. I mean, they're not going to do anything to make a butthole lubricate itself. <laughs> wow. like they're, they're not going to do anything about that, but right. they will make sure that the acronyms are, are correct. <laughs> no, I mean, I, if we want to make everybody feel like their true selves, then they're not going to do anything about that. So, <laughs> you still have to use artificial lubricant. Like, Canada can't fix that. The government can't do a damn thing about that. But they can make sure that the acronyms are correct. I mean, literally, that's what they say. Oh, God. Uh If we could just get past that mental image, that would be swell. Thank you. That would be swell. What was the joke I said the other night? We were sitting at the bar after the uh, premiere of uh, the Uncle Tom movie. (laughs) Which Which is a good movie, by the way. Uncle Tom, too. Go see it. They worked hard on that. They did a great job. Shout out to my guys who, who put together a great film. Um... And I, what was it I was talking about? I said, I'm at a point now where I'm going to start directing geriatric porn. It's just going to be a video of three people sleeping. <laughs> it's a funny joke if you really think about that. Just three people sleeping. <laughs> uh, but that's where we're at. Um, God, there's so, uh, this show is too short, Chris. Uh, there's so much stuff. I want to get into the Aaron Rodgers stuff. I can't. Um, the... Uh, what was what was the uh, oh the New York thing? Let's play that clip real quick. This is Governor Hochul, and we're here to say that the era of Trump and Zeldin and Molinaro just jump on a bus and head down to Florida where you belong. Okay, get out of town. Get out of town because you don't re- you don't represent our values. You are not New Yorkers. God, please let me debate somebody like that woman. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Because, no, I don't. I don't. I sure don't represent your values at all. And trust me, if that was my option, I would take the first greyhound the hell out of there. Um, I love this. I love this. Well, they're creating the separation. They're doing it. Keep saying the quiet parts out loud. (laughs) Yes, keep doing it. I Uh, I agree. And you know what? New Yorkers who, uh, I don't know, dare vote for people like Donald Trump and Lee Zeldin, come here to Texas because we sure could use your help fortifying our state. Come on. I mean, if you got the same values, you heard Representative Brian Slayton, who was on the first part of this show. I mean, if, you, if, that, if that lines up with you, if that's the kind of fight you want to get into, we'll welcome you. Come yep. on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um, they're creating the separation, just like Joe Biden continually talking about these 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 MAGA Republicans. And look, guys, what they're doing is they're labeling you. How many times? I mean, the labels are. It's always about the labels. Got a label. Got a label. Got a label. So we put them in a box, categorize them, put them over here on the shelf. Don't have to deal with them till it's time to deal with them. Then anybody fits that label, then we just throw the label on them. Mm-hmm. They're not even saying the quiet parts anymore. They're not even hiding the quiet parts right. anymore. They're just saying it right out loud. And um, uh, and then and then you want to get pissed off on something else. Um, <laughs> that's funny. The um, that's funny. Miami, talking about Florida, they, they're holding a gun buyback. You know what they're going to do with the guns? They want to send them to Ukraine. To Ukraine. <laughs> That's where we're at. That's where we're at. They're just sending them to, sending them to Ukraine. <laughs> this is pure insanity. Mm-hmm. 
This is pure insanity. You said something about a situation the other day. You said this is like Russia and Ukraine. There's no good guys in any of this stuff. Yeah. If you can't see, if you can't see, let's go further. It is. Oh God, I don't even know what the what the censorship is right now on Ukraine. But you know, if you can't see that this is a big old money laundering scheme going on, I mean, we're going to send them a hundred billion dollars. Yep. yep. And and they're going to funnel it back through. And where do you think these politicians? You know what they do? And and who was it? Was it uh, was it a uh, God, uh, Benjamin Franklin, who said as soon as um, politicians can figure out how to vote themselves money, the republic will be dead. I mean, and basically, I'm paraphrasing, but that's, that's the deal. I mean, that's what they're doing. They keep putting this stuff in play. The money get, it goes to these guys. They launder it. Boom, gets sent right back to them. I seem to recall a certain president who was trying to blow the whistle on some corruption, some possible corruption that was happening in Ukraine with United States politicians. Yeah. Uh, but and, he, and, he and tweeted look, mean things, so they sent him yeah, away. He did. And he had a phone call, so he got impeached. Yes. You want to know what? You know why our founding fathers have the 25th Amendment? You know why they wrote that? Is because of exactly what Joe, Joe Biden's Biden. doing right now, <laughs> who's trying to do something that was unconstitutional and without Congress. And so they, they called him on it. They didn't have it. So now he's trying it again. Mm -hmm. That's why the 25th Amendment wasn't over a phone call. They didn't write it because you might be talking to a foreign leader. That this, what he's doing, Joe Biden right now, this, this, it, they're laundering money for crying out loud. And can I just tell in you, simplest terms? And can I just tell you the that, that Miami story uh, specifically? It always is amazing how much money they are trying to give you. They want to give you a hundred and fifty dollar Visa gift card if you if you give them your AR. I'll I'll give you hundred and fifty dollars right now. You want to turn in your yeah, AR? Yeah, I'm like, I'll, I'll give you 200. I will 200. buy your ARs all day uh -uh. long. I'll give you 200. I'll give you, I'll give you more if you give them to me. Yeah. Yes. There you go. We <laughs> Let's do it. That's a, that's a great deal for whoever's receiving the, uh, the weapon. Yeah, not you, not so much. Yeah, but the movers, the movers, they said, uh, my movers are coming on Thursday to move me. And they're like, well, we can't transport guns. And I said, you ain't touching my guns anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think I was going to let you do that? That's wait. So they are they not won't do allowed that. No to. movers will do that. Really, I didn't know that. No guns, no bullets. Anyway, not done. Be right back. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, sign up for Blaze. BlazeTV.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Subscribe to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered, shop Sarah G mm -hmm. dot com, and uh, tune into the news and why it matters to get all of your Sarah goodness. Mm. You go to watchchad.com. This Saturday, I'm going to be in uh, Conroe, Texas, a Southern Star Brewing Music Festival. We're headlining. Going to be wow. there. Going to be rocking and rolling. We'll be having a good time. So get your tickets now at watchchad.com and peruse the site. All right. <sighs> So much stuff, Sarah. I know. So little time. I know. We love y'all. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Be good. Bye.